Paris. Fashion Week is underway here in the City of Lights, but not as we know it. For nine days, there are a mix of physical and digital shows. There are 16 in-person ready-to-wear runway collections with masked guests, around 20 in-person presentations, and several dozen digital shows streamed online with promotional videos. I'm joined by fashion journalist Alice Pfeiffer. Hello, welcome Hi. to the show. Thanks for joining us. Now, Milan's Fashion Week shows and presented an optimistic view of 2021 with catworks full of um, party dresses and hot pants. What's the general mood like at Paris Fashion Week? I'd say it's both cautious and unexcited. The runways in, them, in themselves aren't that different. So it's, it's you know, they're spaced out on, on the actual catwalk, so there's no risk. Uh, but backstage, no bees are allowed. Um, and the real show generally is outside the show itself. So there's far less uh, paparazzi, uh, street style photographers, Far less Instagram is trying to get their picture taken. A uh, hundred guests max, so no more, no more front row because everyone's spaced out. So, no, I'd say, I'd say it's it almost serves a functional purpose rather than 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 a social event. And Alice, what are the trends we're seeing on the catwalks? Well, what's interesting is that there's definitely an evolution from the post-apocalyptic trends last season, where people wore a lot of gas masks, and and there was a trend called War Corps too, which was all about army gear and the season there's something much more esoteric and ritualistic that that's on the runways uh almost a search for new meaning and and a new sense in in life and nature uh it's also very safe it's lots of tailoring it's lots of uniforms so people are not going too wild and it's also a trend for people who don't know if they're going to be confined again so what should you invest in is there, is there any point even buying a coat if you're not stepping out of the house so definitely things that work for in, indoors and outdoors just as well Okay, well, Christian Dior was the first major fashion house to stage a traditional ready-to-wear runway show in Paris since the coronavirus pandemic hit in March. Despite COVID um, restrictions, Dior showed us that the runway is still very sacred to the city. Here's the creative director, Maria Grazia Shuri. Fashion is a ritual where our audience uh, uh, come to the show, is part of our show, is part of the community. But I know that uh, in the future we don't know that uh, we can uh, work like in the past, but uh, we are to, to think like we can uh, realize in some way a ritual in a different way. So for Dior, the audience may have been slashed to about one-fifth of the size yes. of last season with only 350 guests. Um, but Dior did still build a cathedral um, for this As they would, show. Of course. Tell us more about it. I think Dior has a huge online audience. So the show is also thought for how it's going to be transcribed online, you know? So it's it's referred to as a digital, so both physical and digital. And it's something that's going to look good for the guests, but it's going to look good on camera too. So there's something very um, Instagram friendly. A lot of it is also for all the buyers who couldn't come over because the audience, remember, was, was mainly French because all the, all the traveling has shut down. Definitely, it's meant for, for like a digital gaze. And Alice, what shows have stood out for you so far? I especially liked Wells Bonner, who's a British designer and who showed for the first time in Paris alongside a movie that she shot in Jamaica. So she raised a lot of questions regarding gender and ethnicity via the, the mixed content. So I think she did a brilliant job. Gaucher did a really fantastic job. She did very minimalist, she completely stripped down from all the all the noise that usually happens at a fashion week. Tebe Magugu, who's an African designer, also did a very... Uh, Beautiful job, very vintage, uh, very couture, and um, completely re reinventing how we might think of um, as African tradition. So I think the, the the strong points for me were the very young designers who are used to anyway not having that much money, so we're probably probably relieved not to have to produce a fashion show and and, and to focus on a video. Um, so you know, I'd say definitely the it's it's very for me it's it's very good news to see such a strong young voices in France rather than just big houses like like we usually focus on. Some of the big shows are yet to take place, um, yes. like Chanel and Louis Vuitton. Yes. What can we expect from those shows? Because they're physical shows. They're physical shows, but again, they're going to they're, they're have really strong uh, digital content. So I, I expect something that's going to look good for all the, again, all the buyers in China who can't come over, you know? So um, uh, the, the show is, is, is happens as much in... in outside the venue, the backstage content produced, sort of the theatrics of it. Um, so I'd expect something that's classical runway with, with, something, yeah, with something very photogenic. 
Okay, well, if you can't get to these very exclusive fashion shows, there are several new fashion exhibitions taking place in Paris. One of them uh, is dedicated to one woman who set the tone for 20th century style, Gabrielle Chanel. The fashion designer freed women from the corsets and frou-frou of the 19th century, proving that comfort and elegance could exist in the same outfit. She's now the focus of a new exhibition at the Palais Galliera Museum of Fashion, which has just reopened after extensive renovations. Olivia salazar Winspear and Jerome Vasilikos went to check it out. Trousers, the little black dress, even getting a suntan, they're all part of the revolutionary legacy of Gabrielle Chanel. The designer radically transformed the way we dress in the first half of the 20th century. Now Paris's Galliera Museum is paying tribute to her and her fashion manifesto. After the First World War, Chanel noticed that some women were freeing themselves from social diktats and she wanted to free up their wardrobe. No more corsets and restrictive garments. She went for comfortable fabrics, flowing lines, with a relaxed and even sporty feel to the... Miran Arzalouz delved into the archives here at the Galliera Museum to put this exhibition together. Miran, tell us, what was so revolutionary about this so-called fashion manifesto? Well, we chose precisely chose Fashion Manifesto for the title of the exhibition because we identified two moments in her life in which she completely opposed to the fashions of her time. And that was in the very beginning of her career in the 19-teens and at, at her comeback to fashion in the 19th century. I mean, she put the woman at the center of her creation. So anything that she conceived, she designed, she created, was for the woman to be natural, to move freely, to be at ease with herself. And that's, I mean, in my view, is already revolutionary. And it was more so in the 19-teens. The modernity of these clothes is striking, even a century on. How did Chanel use new technology, new fabrics, when creating her collections? Well, I think her, her modernity lies in her simplicity and, and the fact that she bases her work in timeless uh, concepts. I mean, these concepts that we were talking about, about, about liberty, about comfort, about freedom of movement, about simplicity, about lightness, youth. These are ideas that guide her work and, and which make her work timeless. She, what is very strong in her is that she, all her technique is in the service of this freedom of movement, of this comfort. And, and then every detail uh, in, her, in her clothes is towards, you know, to guarantee this, this principle. In 1921, Coco, as she was known to friends, launched her first fragrance. Its minimalist bottle became iconic, and Chanel No. 5 is still a worldwide bestseller 100 years later. From then on, the label went beyond the clothes. From the quilted handbag to the statement jewellery and the two-tone pumps, accessories were key. The Second World War signalled a dark chapter in Chanel's history. Known to be close to German authorities during the occupation, the designer spent the war living at the Ritz in Paris, the HQ of the Nazi Air Force at the time. It wasn't until the 1950s that she made her comeback with the Chanel suit, an ensemble that exemplified Gabrielle Chanel's sense of style. Sober, elegant, with the sort of clean lines that echoed the architectural creations of Le Corbusier or Charlotte Perriand. Sandra Courtine and Dominique Braud designed the layout of this show. I knew Gabrielle Chanel's work as much as anyone else does. The iconic suit, for example. 
But then we discovered a rigor, a desire to break with tradition, which was very striking. And you can transpose those ideas to architecture. The different qualities of black, the way she worked with black textures, from matte to gloss, draped fabrics and taut fabrics. These are things that resonate with us in terms of interior design, these materials and that precision, of course. This opulent private residence just off the Champs-Élysées was given to the city of Paris in 1920. Now the museum's showcasing the work of a designer who molded a century of fashion in her own image and whose manifesto is quietly evident in the way we get dressed today. all the clothes we saw there they do seem very relevant today don't they they still feel completely modern and what's really interesting about her is that she did things that seem completely normal in fashion today and she brought them onto the onto runways and onto presentations and in, into haute couture there's definitely this mix of references and high and low that she's completely unique for okay Alice, thank you so much for joining us. We're going to leave you now with the fashion photography of visual artist Man Ray that's taking over the walls of Paris's Musée de Luxembourg. The exhibition is on until January. Remember our website, we're also on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. There's more news coming up on France 24 after this.